Hey guys, this is Kirop speaking and today we are going to do a little uh, let's play with the very bare bones light campaign and just checking out the first few years of the campaign and uh, see what we can do with it. Uh, so I plan to first stop time acceleration and design a new car. We do have one billion dollars, but I think that might be a little much. So what our goal is, is to never go below zero. And for that we will make a car in a small factory, or at least that is the goal of things. And uh, now we have to think about what could that car be. Well, we could make a pretty large GT. I think we're, so the basic thought here is if you are such a small manufacturer with just one factory in one region and it's a small factory then you potentially want to make cars which have a high markup and high markups are usually fine in categories that have a lot of money and uh, prestigious categories so uh, this one especially I think is very well suited this car body very well suited for accomplishing that because if you or well we have to first advance here we have a convertible version in here and uh, a standard version and you usually at the start in a small factory you should not not make any more than two trims we can extend the back a little bit and do we want to extend the front yeah let's do that um, smaller uh, smaller footprints usually lower scores in prestigious categories so we are going for a large footprint and also white stands because white stands looks awesome stands nation there we go maybe want to have a little bit of quality in here just because because engineering time is a reasonably small portion of the whole thing and while we don't have any negative cash flow yet apart from engineering we potentially can uh, yeah do that with our first car so sp uh, space frame it is and let's go with the high-end stuff and no mass production we are fine with that because we are in a very much not automated factory and why I like this car body so much is that it's basically front mid as a setup the engine if you place it longitudinally rear that will mean that it's sitting right there which is in the middle of the car and that has the consequence of uh, brakes working even though they are really shit in these early days so we uh, place a nice big grill on the front and rear wheel drive nothing fancy there there are no options uh, 4x4 don't forget that that is not all-wheel drive that is all-wheel drive only if you are on muddy or loose surfaces because otherwise you destroy your car um, we could either go with a v6 or go with a v12 I think we are going with a really nice and simple v12 that fits perfectly into the profile of the, such a company and a six liter that would be really heavy but I kind of like it um, so that would mean we can go with a direct acting because this size still revs a little higher than what push rods can do and with this I mean that the internals uh, support a little more than the push rod head at reasonable quality and the direct acting is a little bit more rev friendly but has um, somewhat lower reliability and premium categories don't really care that much about reliability after all I hope this works out with just cast otherwise we might go larger and push rod let's see we could make a, a huge hulking beast oh well should we do that let's see what fits in here oh okay I think we have found what we are going to do <laughs> just something completely crazy let's see if we can sell anything like that a 16 liter 16.3 liter mind you v12 and we're going with bushrod heads because we now we need to find oh, look at these valves those, those are probably as big as my head um, now we need to find methods of reducing the power because we only have shit wheels on the car which can't cope with power so everything that reduces power will be very nice 
So let's go with pushrod then, and it's really cheap to engineer as well. And now we definitely need heavy duty cars because that all the dock in the motor will be doing. And uh, let's place this at plus three. And um, compression definitely go low here. We don't want cam profile because revs make power and we then completely destroy the rear wheels. And um, we do want to have a little bit of quality on the pushrod head, but not too much because it's a V12 and super expensive. So, let's go with this. Carburetors. No, the engine is too big. It's too high. What the hell? Can we get around this somehow? Race. No. No, we can't. Are these flatter? No, they are the same. Meh. All right, the engine is too high, so what we are going to do is to lower stroke until it fits. No, all my precious liters are going away. No. Uh, damn it. So maybe we just have to reduce this one. Can we get up? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, it's not that bad. It's just stroke, which was the major culprit here. So let's try to get to 13 liters. That should be reasonable right so 13 liter v12 and let's get back to the fuel systems six carbs yes six carbs sounds perfect no not again <laughs> all right let's drop um can we do this with just stroke nope we can't so down with this one let's go with 12 liters instead because that's also a nice number <laughs> all my nice capacity uh, 12.004 liters. So, but now you fit and don't change anymore, right? Um, we do want to run it rich because you want to be at the uh, tank stop for people to see your car as often as possible. That is how you extend your dick, I've heard. And like this. No. Cam. Now, timing 55. We start there because we're very, very low revving. And hmm, RPM limiter. Let's go with 12,000. No, not really. Uh, we start with 3,500 and see if it revs anywhere near that. See what it costs. 1,300. That's quite steep. We need to have lots of margin. And let's go with 1,100. We are 1,000. Okay, that's our budget. 1,000 on the fuel system. And then because it's so low revving and we don't want to make much power... Uh, how much power? 763 it would be supporting. Uh, that is a lot. Um, we go with dual. Mm, yeah, maybe. And then strangle it. Alright. And now we just need to test the engine. Well, that wasn't too bad, Free, but 360 horsepower is is completely bonkers in that time. And there will be more. There will be more because we still have some octane left. And there's 370. Um, maybe we even want to strangle it a little bit more. 340, but this is with knock. 353, that sounds better. And we get a nice sloping downwards torque curve which makes the car more comfortable to ride. So um, we go with that. Oh, but wait a second. We did have some troubles with the pistons, didn't we? Um, this reduces it a lot. This doesn't. So no, it's, it isn't too bad. Uh, this all works out. How loud is this thing? Uh, loud is 45. Well, we can't get lower than that. And... If we want to make it more sporty, by the way, we should maybe consider to go with just one here. Because this moves it very close to 60, which is kind of the optimal value for sporty cars. Now let's go with that. Manual gearbox, four gears, and... F oh, shit. <laughs> okay. 309 kilometers an hour. In 1946? Oh shit. I think there will be many deaths. Um, um, 
I, I, no, okay, this engine can't even get there because the, uh, it revs so low that the gearbox, the final gear, has to be too large. So what do we do instead? Just have it at maximum and then see to, do we want to have this in first gear go to 100? Uh, it's kind of insane, but then again, this thing would probably need a starter motor <laughs> to rev it up to 100 RPM, which then is its idle speed or something. Uh, we don't need that, but we do need tires, and good tires we need. And this car is also really nice because it supports somewhat larger uh, tires. But let's take a look at this beast. <laughs> Okay, uh, it's kind of like a hidden battering ram. You drive into something and you would break through 10 meters of concrete at that top speed. How much does this engine weigh, by the way? I didn't check. Uh, it weighs... Ah, oh, it's just a little bit more than half a ton. And that isn't too bad. I mean, it sounds very modern. Um, and on 335s, that's a death wish. It truly is a death wish. So we go with 45s, but then also we need brakes which support this beast. So maybe we just outright limit its top speed um, even more than that, just so that the braking penalties aren't as harsh. Uh, let's go with 300s, maximum there, 300s, maximum there, and plus 6 or something. And nothing fancy. Oh, we have far too little cooling. And that is where we can drop our top speed a little and just have cooling reduced. Uh, no, increased. So the top speed is yeah, that's looking better. Like this. 467. Was this what we needed? Um, yeah, kind of. So let's go like this and see if top speed has decreased, increased. 293 estimated top speed. No, we're not going there. And where were we? Here. And two seats, and we make it handmade and luxury. And advanced, because, well, you, you do have quite a bit of a crumple zone, but uh, that engine block in there, no, I don't know, man. I don't know. So uh, maybe a bit of quality on this one. Definitely not quality on this one because this is so damn expensive. And standards, sporty, or maybe comfort because we are building more of a, a GT car. But let's see what terrible stats this is giving us. Ew. Okay, prestige is really good, um, as expected. And the economy is surprisingly good. Let's see what it does. Okay, okay. As expected, we do have quite some troubles getting this in line, but the values here already seem appropriate. Muscle premium and hypercar. The brakes aren't that bad, surprisingly enough. Let's see how high we get here. We have to watch our engineering time. That especially. The overall material cost isn't that much of an issue, but this definitely is. Hmm. All right, let's first get the driving uh, characteristics in order. And how do we do this? Um, drop this one. Oh, yeah, almost perfect. So um, now comes a little bit of steering roll angle 4.2. Very bad. So what we are going to do is amp up the rear sway bar. What? That was a little too much. That was a little bit too much. Ah, uh, that's because the, the tires are bugging out. Anyway, uh, that's simple to solve. We just decrease it and then from below increase it again. And now it has something which is reasonable. And there we go, 99. Uh, 99 in the wrong end. But we are at 3.7 still. We don't really want that. So let's just end those up quite a bit more. And there we have it, 1.0. We have a reasonable drivability now. The sportiness is terrible because we're probably driving like a big boat. Uh, and it doesn't have any acceleration either because, well, look at this. <laughs> look at this shit. Yeah, you can't accelerate because the tires are just spinning all the, all the way. Um, fun, fun car to drive. This is pure shit, if you ask me. <laughs> then again, it's completely unusable. Uh, it's like, yep, burnout everywhere. In the parking lot. 
uh, when you try to get out of your uh, your Walmart, which didn't exist back then, I guess. Um, yep. So, um, what do we do about this beast? Well, let's see if it sells. Um, ah, we still have a little bit to do with the uh, putting out the wheels. Quite far. Let's make this reasonable, though. This has to come out. Yeah, okay, this is the maximum. And what are the driving characteristics? They are still decent-ish. And I don't even want to, to start optimizing for sportiness because the base value here is so low. And it would so much destroy drivability even more that it's not worth it. I don't think it's worth it. So 99 there. We can get it a little bit more camber to just improve the handling overall, which should up. Yes, it does. That's even higher. Okay. It does up the driving stats overall, and I wonder how often people will have to change those rear tires. Let's see, how much do they add? Nothing, basically. Okay. Um, doesn't help. Doesn't help at all. Higher quality. Yeah, it does help a little bit. But then again, engineering time. Yeah, yeah well, let's go with this. All right, what more can we do with this one, this beast? So we have muscle premium above 100, but this is at mark up zero. And we have super and hypercar really high. So this should sell to basically all these segments, but this is at 21,000. It's definitely not a good utility sports luxury vehicle. And let's see what happens at 50%, which is very low. Hyper doesn't care. GT Premium barely cares, uh, Luxury Premium really doesn't care much at all, but all other categories disappear, and as this is a true beast of a car, uh, we do want to sell to supercar buyers, I have a feeling. So maybe we just go with... We want this over 80 maybe? 150? If we sell this at a margin of plus 150%, then that should give us a nice little bump. We sell few cars only, but um, yeah, I think that should be good. So let's take a look at the test track. <laughs> airfield test track. Let's slide around the airfield test track. What time do we get? Well, <laughs> okay. As expected, the first thing you get is wheel spin. This thing must be scary to drive and look at the shit cornering. Half a G only. Wow. I think this car would be so much better without the uh, massive engine in it. And we could, we could maybe test that, but no, nah, nah, maybe in a future model. We test that in a future model, and it should be good. Uh, anyway, so we have 3.9 years, that's quite a lot, so let's get that one down. 3.3, um, and increase the funding a little bit. Ah, but that's, that hurts, that's quite a bit. Quite a bit of money. So much money. And 2.4 isn't nearly as bad. So we can go efficient and reduce funding, and we can even increase the reliability. What do we have here? 3.3. So we can go to 3.3 if we wanted to. There we go. Nice reboost in reliability overall. And now we need a factory. Let's build this in a small factory. And another small one. Although... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let's go with this. It's, we are probably overproducing massively and that will set us back. But then over the coming years, this one will continue selling and we can switch it out to something which is a little bit more reasonable, let's say, um, in the near future. Uh, now, let's build a small factory on top of this. And automation 0.8 and tooling. Yeah, we probably want to leave it at that. And then we have a small engine factory and automation 19 per day and 6 per day. Okay, so we don't really need much automation in this one, but it increases so much the cost of production. We have to watch out for that. 
and we have some sweet spot down here we shouldn't go below 35 and here it increases a lot and here it reduces but there's a sweet spot somewhere there but then again tooling quality right now this isn't implemented yet um, that would increase your chance of callbacks we don't really want that so let's leave it at 50 that's good and here we have our production six cars a day ah, uh, nine cars a day almost let's go exactly nine just about nine and then we can reduce this one and increase this here this might even be possible to um, get into a state where you could run a normal small factory building the car and then at the same time have a tiny factory building the engine because the difference is so large because of all these limited and no mass production flags which are on the car but not on the engine okay let's go with this one nine engines produced per day and nine cars produced per day that is a lot because i think uh, the market is something around 0.5 cars a day or even less than that so now we are still doing really well in hyper 120 if we sell hyper cars that will give us a massive score boost um so this is all set up it will cost us 187 million to engineer this beast and set up the factory and let's do that so this was the plot cost up front you see here deducted and now we just the time accelerate and start selling this thing and then once we have built up a stock which is large enough we can switch out the production and make a little bit more sensible car which has a little bit wider audience and we are in production and we sold something yes uh, we still have a lot of stock, but I think due to a bug here you don't always see the number of sales, but we definitely sold something. Uh, let's see if this sometimes jumps to the actual number of sales. Yeah, there we go. Wow! We are selling a lot. 114 cars each month. I mean, we are producing many more than that, but uh, this basically covers our costs, it seems. Let's see how the money goes. Now we even win with this, so that's very good. The stock doesn't increase that much either. Very good, and we are getting quite a bit of score, considering that we are only producing from a small factory. Uh, very good, so uh, we are making money, and we are building stock, and soon we can then start to set up a new production. All right, I think at the start of 51, we want to start a new car. Now we are, we will continue building us up a stock while this is still in production and we are in engineering. But then the, uh, this stock should easily cover the, uh, um, the sales for the months where the factory is retooled. So now we build a new car in 51 and we make this a little bit more sensible and maybe even have a uh, convertible version as well let's see um, it's basically the the uh, big thing we just built but as a light version so let's build it as the coupe and this is the smaller one smaller means of course lighter which means it doesn't strain the brakes as much i just hope that the wheels have the same size i'm not sure about this one though maybe they don't we still need to choose the space frame and the aluminium, the aluminium body because uh, no mass production and no, not because of that, because we are in a small factory and the steel panels can only be built in, well, right now they can be built everywhere. Um, should we use that fact? Yeah, I'm not even sure if we want to remove that for the light campaign, but later on that definitely is true. So let's go a little cheaper, but then again, no, 
Ah, it's still a premium car, so it's so undecided. Care up, why are you so undecided? Monocoque, medium. Hmm. Okay, let's go with this. It is uh, really the little brother of uh, the big beast we just built. Let's have it like this. And. Rear wheel drive. And now let's build a more sensible car out of this with an inline six instead of a v12 so maybe we can get into this i would aim to get into like sports car maybe a little gt um towards that area but i'm not sure oh three liters do we want to make a low revving one or should we just continue ah, we can just continue with our v12s i think but make a more much more sensible one Okay, 75 bore and a 4 liter V12? That sounds much more reasonable, doesn't it? And we go with direct acting so we can rev it a little. And then we can go with cast because <laughs> it doesn't produce uh, insane amounts of torque anymore. Uh, we do not need any quality on this, I think. But I might be wrong. Definitely not more compression, but rather less. And we can rev this higher, so we can have more cam profile. And we want to have top end quality. And triple two barrel. That doesn't sound too expensive. Well, we go with performance and a little higher fuel mixture, but not too much. And then 65 here. And we probably can rev this to 5700 ish increase the quality on the fuel system that gives us a lot of reliability which is right now not that important for the high up categories but later on in the campaign once we have implemented all the features uh, that is very important for your company reputation because who wants to buy cars which are known to always break down all right, so exhaust, we go singular, tubular, uh, singular, yeah, single, tubular, and a single reverse flow. Just calm it down a little bit. Wow, this is making almost as much power as the other one. Uh, from a much lower weight, from less than half the weight. That sounds pretty good to me. So um, you can see like going big is not always a good idea. Also the reliability is dropping off significantly up there because of the pistons. So I think what we want to do is to actually increase the uh, quality here too. To plus five. Let's see how much engineering time that adds. That's a lot actually. Wow! That is super much engineering time. Yeah, and then uh, we can't really rev that high. Um, see that decreases I'm willing to go there but no further because we increase the uh, quality here quite a bit let's see how much that makes a difference it's a big difference for the fuel system so we basically have the bottom end a little stressed but yeah the demographics don't really care and we can put a little more engineering time into it to make it work because this increase in bottom end quality here just goes crazy insane uh, up the um, compression and we are at 247 horsepower that is kind of a supercar we are making so that should be a segment we can we can aim for we can aim for making a supercar and a supercar convertible in this, uh, in this so let's call it the super and some other random names uh, that is all good and very much uh, issue so we go with this continue onwards and have a very nice engine the xfg 4 liter v12 isn't it beautiful let's see how this one fits in the car oh look at that isn't that cute this is much more placed to the front though which i don't like uh, this was so brilliant with the other other larger body of the same thing uh, that it was really a mid-engine and this is a front engine with a very slight mid component to it. 
We are not going with a uh, automatic, but rather a four-speed manual. This one revs a lot higher, so we could go to an insane speed, uh, unlike with the other one. But we definitely don't want to. And here, again, I don't really know if, if that is a good option. Spacing 100, so the second gear goes to 100. Or if you want the first gear to go to 100. Or if we just don't really care. But this should reduce wheel spin a little bit. Maybe, maybe. Um, maybe we even have to resort to the... Uh, uh, automatic locker. Uh, let's, let's not forget about this one. And place... No, we don't need more power at the wheels. Stop it. Um, and... Wheel size? Yay, they also go to 650. That is optimal. And now let's see if we can get even more out of it now that time has progressed. Yes, we can have 55s. Can we have more? 65s! Wow! Uh, look, that almost looks proper. Yay. And put those wheels out. Yep, that's looking good. Mm, we are going with a little muscly uh, rims. And then we still don't have the next version of the drum brake, so those will be shit. But uh, yeah, and increase this this to 100. And in the rear, we probably don't quite need that because the weight balance is a lot to the front with the heavy block in front. But this still needs a plus five, I would estimate. And here we go with the required cooling, not more. We don't really care about that much about reliability. Also, brake airflow. I will show you this effect right uh, right when the car is done. You want to be using that only in extreme cases where you have the time. Because that takes engineering effort. And this time around, we want to make a supercar. So we only go with luxury, maybe? And luxury here, but not handmade. Because this has another no mass production flag. But this one, so this is basically a difference between those is 30% in volume, production volume of the car. We go with advanced safety, also costing us a lot of time, but uh, people like to be safe in their cars, it seems, sometimes. And sports, hmm, and that is probably too low. And we can adjust the camber later. Let's see what we have. Wow, okay, these stats are much more a driver's car but we can optimize a lot from here let's first get the market set straight because this might not be the yes okay very good that was still bugged we have <laughs> currently to have the absolute certainty of that you are viewing the right thing you have to up the year by one and then down the year so we have a sports car above 100 and a supercar this is just what we aim for so that's brilliant and now, before we head on, we of course want to set up this car fully and then clone it and create a coupe version, uh, a convertible version of it. So first off, we want to see if we, with the large wheels, can get this one to behave. So I'm going to give it minus two camber in the rear, that's already looking better. And then we give it a little softer springs in the rear up this one a little and then softer sway bar in the rear and bloop, there we are look at that and hmm, can we get closer we can get even closer but now we have to watch this one at high speed that it also turns downwards and it does so if we increase this one slightly we can move higher but you see all the stats decrease and that's probably because this one turned around Almost. It cuts off here, which is already worse. So, um, yeah, no, we don't want to do that. This was pretty much perfect. Okay, really nice car overall. And let's take a look at the brakes. Oh, not really nice car overall. This is shite. And if we put it to eight, nah, doesn't really do much there, unfortunately. Gives us a few more stats and so on, but... Uh, I don't think it's worth it. So um, we just have to wait for an upgrade to our brakes. And with TechPool, this would already be available if you had invested something into your uh, company TechPool. You would be ahead of time and could select the uh, uh, two shoe variant. 
this doesn't look quite as bad as the other one we just had with the <laughs> with our big hypercar. Um, let's see if the acceleration is good. 6.5 seconds from 0 to 100 in 1951. Now that is a supercar. All right, let's check out the markets once again. And if this is correct, then yeah, it is correct. Look at that. This is brilliant. But still at zero markup so let's increase this to like one uh, yeah uh, uh, okay one we need at least 100 from such a small volume production i would say and these markets are really small too but we will have this one as well and um, yes we could even make a now we have a small factory i was thinking about a fur trim which is more of it uses the same engine but has much lower interior quality and so on so that we could sell it in a lower category like the sports for a sports car version of this one but now okay i think the oh yeah well test track let's see how quick this one is around it and uh, once we have done that let's clone it and well, okay, the bi our big hypercar, which really wasn't a hypercar because it was so shit, um, was 25 seconds slower than our supercar. That tells you something. People, be reasonable with engine size. That is a good message to, to give out to you. Uh, also, we now want to clone this thing and call it the convertible. But what is a convertible without being convertible? So we have to change this one over, looking fancy and all. We could make this longer. Do we want that? Yeah, let's let's do this because this has a little bit more footprint and uh, yeah, I don't know. People people may like it. Let's uh, just have this version with a longer tail. The stats overall are much worse because of the increased weight. We almost gained 100 kilograms, or a little bit more than 100 kilograms. We have to recheck that everything is in order here. No, it isn't. We have to um, get rid of the bottoming out. And then we may be able to further optimize this a little bit. If we make it softer in front, no. Nope. It's good in general, but um, we are a little bit on the soft side overall. So we want to increase the front camber a little bit to get closer. That was maybe a little too much. Yes, it was. This one has turned over to catastrophic oversteer at high speeds above 200 kilometers an hour. Yay! In a 1951 car. Sounds perfect. Um. We are about to turn over there, all right. Ah, that was the sweet spot here, it seems. Uh, let's go. Yep, there it is. And what do the brakes do with so much more weight? Well, they suffer the most, I guess. Uh, the braking performance is much worse. We have more brake fade and so on. But now let's see what uh, the convertible stuff did to our markets. Just to be sure again that we actually are seeing the right thing convertible super 100 competitiveness um, but basically our car uh, the convertible car only really sells in this category when we are selling uh, the super and hyper variant uh, which is the coupe so um, I'm not so sure about if we want to produce too many of these we don't want to have, be sitting on a huge stock for them so we have the same markup, also 100%, that should be fine. Maybe we can even go a little higher, because that doesn't reduce that much. Uh, 98, yeah, that is a good competitiveness to have. Still 91 can afford it. Let's go with this. Let's be greedy. We won't produce many of these. So it's everything set up i would say um test track we don't need or oh, let's see how much slower this one is oh yeah you can see that 2.2 seconds slower uh, that is rather significant a difference and now engineering time for how much longer do we have to produce our our ship our boat with a uh, what was it in the end 12 liter v12 or something um 
So efficient makes it two years, 11 months, and then, I mean, we can afford it to get to 10. So we are on the limit between 10 and 11 on the 10 side. Uh, this one is also rather long engineering time here. And we can get it to 10. 11 on the 10 side. So, all right, this is optimal. And now, whew, we want to put this into our small factory to get rid of the other production, which is insane. And have this small one. We keep all the factory stats like this, yes. And now, convertible down with you. We don't want too many of these. Maybe maybe two per day and 13 of the coop that might be a good split because uh, the coop has so many more demographics to sell to and now we go to the engines engines only produces eight but we need 15 so up the shifts until we reach that and rather overproduce a little or should we go with this 49 15 yes let's go with this 1.8 shifts. Very good. This is all set up and we can get into production. This the total cost of this is 29 million. That is peanuts for us now that we are still producing our model 1 uh, which we didn't didn't even care to give it a name. Probably should be called the Hulk or something. Let's speed this up until something happens. And pretty soon this would be cancelled and we are selling only from stock anymore because it has to be retooled for the start of the production of our supercar. Ah, when is that? Now, okay, now it's cancelled. And now we should see if we open this one that we sell from stock. Yes, stock is getting lower. Uh, these engines, of course, are not sold. But now we are quite much ready to tool for the uh, supercar and it will go into production in three months time and there we have it all right production we made 60 convertibles and 384 coupes in that month let's see how well they sell and let's watch the score 18.49 and 1.21 Wow, okay, that was a big bump, yes, uh, and made 30 million there, that is, and we sold everything, uh, that is successful, also we sold another 100 of these up here, on top of all that, uh, that is really nice, uh, we are becoming very rich indeed, so soon we will have the funds to open up a new factory, and I think that will be a medium sized factory because that is around ish that cost. Now let's see what we could do there. Um, let's wait another month. And there we go. So, um, while we are setting up a new factory, we are still earning a lot of money. So, even if it costs a little bit more than the 1.29 billion we currently have, then that will be fine. We are not going to drop below zero. So uh, let's go with a new car and what I'm going to do now is um, let's design something even more reasonable. Something more in the family or in the premium family sport category where there are many more buyers but uh, also maybe in the direction of the just premium market. So. Um, what body types do we have there? Uh, might even be better to be waiting until 1955 with that. Uh, and because that may give us new body types? I'm not quite sure. Um, but yes. Ah, uh, now let's, let's go and build uh, not this boat. We are not going to build a boat. Um, again, based on this one, the larger one, we know nowadays that we can make this one sensible if we try 
uh, because also it has the engine very much in the middle. So we continue our tradition here, but this time around we are going to build it based on a monocoque and steel. That will lower the production costs a lot and it will make it uh, mass producible. So let's go with this steel. And that is possible because we build it in a medium factory. Also, we don't really want to uh, go with a V12 in this case, but uh, rather a an inline six. Also very smooth. It has this premium feel to it, and it is much cheaper overall. Uh, let's see, how large do we want it to go? 80 bore. We probably want to be somewhere around 2.2 liters with this one. Uh, that should rev reasonably high but uh, not be too obnoxious and heavy. So direct acting also for this one. Very cheap and efficient. And we go like this. We don't need to increase the quality here. Uh, but we might want to go with a cam profile or that is a little lower than for our other engines. Maybe a 45? Uh, it's not a crazy supercar after all. But this is very sporty for the old days still. It's like almost like you could shift the scale somewhat downwards for um, the earlier periods of the game. Uh, this is the top end though, so we want to put some quality into that. Not too much. We want to make this engine reliable, so we don't want to spend too much engineering time on just figuring out how to get that much quality into it, but rather to make it reliable at the uh, slightly reduced quality. So carbs and uh, are we going with a single barrel eco triple setup maybe? That could be interesting. And performance and um, or standard actually because we don't want the service costs to, to be too high. And then we have a decent-ish fuel economy maybe 14.5 that is very much a sweet spot for these carbs and we do want to have a little bit more um, throttle response though and maybe we can rev it to uh, 5 8 something around there do want to increase the quality here though because uh, now we are getting into markets which care much more about the reliability and then uh, short tubular to make it lighter or short cast to have a boost in economy. Hmm, difficult, difficult. Maybe the former. We want to be in the middle. We want to have good mid range and performance. But we are going very quiet with this one. Double reverse flow because we want to have the maximum comfort. 200 horsepower is definitely too much. And there we have the first stats, very nice. Uh, do we have to test it? No, we don't. Mm, let's see, 210. Do we care about those 13.5 grams per kilowatt hour? I don't think we do for sacrificing four horsepower. That's not a good deal. Not for a uh, 110 horsepower engine. But 110 horsepower back then, that is a lot. So, especially in such a small, smaller, small-ish package. And if we increase the intake here, that doesn't give us much either. So I think it's a good choice. Uh, what about our reliability? We could rev it a little higher. We could rev it up here. 6,000, maybe... No, there it drops off. Okay. So... 6,000 is a good limit to rev it to, so maybe if we increase the camper off a little more, that takes a lot away from the mid-range though. I like this better. Also, this shifts it very much forward, as you can see here, for not giving us much more. So maybe we don't want to do that. 488. Hmm, this is could be an efficient engine, like if you run it like this, at 100 horsepower instead. That is pretty good. I like that. Uh, so let's go with a little lower rev limiter here. 5.7. We still are far beyond the peak power. 500 RPM behind peak power. 
in front of the bar. And that should be enough. Uh, we definitely don't have issues with wheel spin with this setup and we can lower the exhaust size a little bit more to gain even more fuel economy. And, but now maybe we want to actually push a little higher. There we go. Yes, that's a good compromise. I think we're done with the engine. We are not looking into having a two-speed automatic, um, but rather a four-speed manual. This car reaches 200 kilometers an hour if it wants to. Uh, maybe it does. We can set it up nicely so that it reaches 100 kilometers an hour in second gear. That is a good middle setup for this one. And oh, we never looked into having automatic locker on the other one, but we didn't really need it, did we? Um, it uh, certainly would help in cases of a massive wheel spin, but uh, we didn't have that problem for our supercar. So let's put sports tires on here, but first we increase the wheel diameter. Let's see, oh, no, can't fit much on it. Come on, free maybe? Yes, okay, free quality. Free quality isn't too expensive yet. And I think that is reasonable to have. Put those wheels out. Yep, that's all good. And uh, this time around we go with these rims because they are pretty. And now we have the two leading shoe. Very nice. Uh, that helps us out even more. Maybe we can even get around the quality issue here that we don't have put massive amounts of quality into it. Um, to even make it work and here now we yeah, this car is still so premium that you don't want to put in double cooling just to get us a little bit of extra reliability but rather you want to have the prestige from the top speed and you don't care that much about um, the fuel consumption either and so on but yeah anyway that is that is all okay like this. We don't want this. This would, uh, like the top end of the slider, add six months of engineering time. I also forgot to show you in the, with the last car, but six months extra there, that is a lot of time. And seats, um, interesting question. We probably want to have a four-seater version of this one because we want to go a little bit more family and premium, right? So if we build a, let's build a base version, a standard version of this one first, let's see. So all are AM radios, that means none of these selections has an inherent bonus, uh, apart from compared to none, of course. Now uh, we can go with premium, standard, and then we go for advanced, because if we choose advanced for all our cars, we just, well, just get it once, right? If you have to, we just have to engineer it once. Uh, when you have several trims and they all have the same um, safety setup, or no, not have the same safety, one has the premium one and the others have the standard one, then you still have an engineering time which corresponds to the advanced one because the standard one can be engineered in the same time without any issue. So we go with the advanced because all our trims are going to have that. Um, and. Let's see, because yeah, you can see the cost, it would only be the cost difference and that is $60 basically. Not that much. I'm quite happy with this setup for a standard version of the car. And now give it a sporty tune. This is too soft, this may be a little hard. And for the rest we see what comes out of it. Uh, this is too low. All right, come on. Yeah, a little bit of similar. We do have a little bit of practicality though, which is nice. So that means it is usable as some kind of premium family car too. Uh, very high safety for the day, but let's optimize it because it looks like sheet. Yes, that's why we have so low driving stats. And let's go into the markets and up the year one and down the year one. And that looks much better than before. Um, well, it looks much worse than before, but much more realistic than before. And indeed, we are in... Oh, this is kind of a pony car. Um, yeah, not really. Uh, but yeah, it has some as aspects of that to it. Why is it scoring so poorly in sports? 
Ah, that, that is because it has uh, fucked up drivability and sportiness values because we haven't tuned it yet. But I'm aiming for sports car and we are aiming for family sport premium. So now let's see what it does once we optimize this a little bit. We want to drop this by one. Uh, do we have to drop it by two even? That would be bad. Um, yeah, they are coming, coming up and they are behaving. But uh, I'm not so happy about this. Maybe we can get this one to turn on itself. Uh, that would be a much better solution. So we want to increase rear camber. That helped a little bit. We want to reduce rear stiffness. That helped a little bit. We want to make the rear sway bar softer. And there we have the turn. Um, but yeah, overall it doesn't really perform well in these. So what does the brake... Uh, uh, it's terrible. Alright, here we can get a lot of stats if we do it right. Uh, we want to have a general level of this one up a lot. Yes, this also moves up the red one, obviously. And then plus five, yeah. Uh, plus four maybe enough. Mm, yes, it is. Uh, let's say it is. Very good. So just very aggressive two true brakes in the front and the same for the rear with a single one. And this one is decent. We still have no cooling issues. Ah, now I can show you this effect here. And there you go. Six months extra engineering time just for a little bit of brake cooling. Not what we want, but let's see. How much does it actually add to the brakes? Um, well, it reduces all brake fade. That's good. So we get a little bit more drivability because of that. And a slight bump to sportiness too. But overall, yeah, it's, it's not worth it. So let's read. Oh, no, nope, we have to get rid of this. And drop this one down. Yes, there we are. Okay, we lose quite a bit of drivability and so on. So that's how it goes. 10 seconds. 10 seconds acceleration. Maybe we can make that a quicker. 10.0. And the top speed. Uh, I think we want to do this by uh, this slider instead. And there we go. See, 9.9 .9 seconds. Yeah, that's that's even better. Automatic locker ups the grip levels. We don't need that as we are not punching through them. R removes wheel spin from 5% down to zero. Not really that important. And let's see if we can. What, what is the problem here? So 93.6% can afford it, but they really don't like the car. It's, it's probably, uh, it's so mundane. So we want some, some luxury in there. Let's go. Luxury. It's better. It's better. But if we go sports, no, they don't really care about that either. Uh, isn't that too expensive for them? Like the premium, and if we go luxury here, ah, that's that's what they want. Okay, they want to have uh, more plays to, uh, more things to play with, and this one comes with your uh, a personal box of sex toys or something. Luxury. All right, and the setup is looking good still. Can we get more sportiness in there? Not really. Uh, this is very hard on uh, the limit. Uh, we could try a different uh, tune, which is more in the middle-ish, which would give us much higher drivability. But then again, not so sure about it, if that would help that much. Oh, but look, we have new categories. And let's see if they, those are just fake or real. They are real. Oh, very nice. Cool. So uh, we actually have made a sport budget car, which is really good, but only 42.4% can afford it. Uh, fun premium car, yeah, kind of fits in. It has some practicality to it and safe and fun, yes, with our uh, our superb uh, engineered safety features from the 50s. And this car really holds up. Maybe I'm looking a little bit in the wrong markets here. Uh, so let's call this one the the base uh, version of the standard 
All right, the names have been assigned. So now let's take a look into what we could do here. Maybe we want to have a two-seater version of this one, which goes all out um, light sport-ish. But then again, we are on the steel chassis so, or steel body, so it's not really that light. We are at 1,000 kilograms. Hmm. All right, let's let's clone this one and try out what we can do with basic and what categories this would be good for. So that should make it very much lighter. And let's go. This is the clone, so let's call it the let's call it the stripped. Um, we don't want any, any, anything in here which weighs us down. So none basic, and yeah, we could reduce the weight a lot. Uh, that would make it a race car because it's now unusable. Safety 7.7. .7. Not something we want. Okay, uh, driving characteristics of this are still very good. Uh, driving characteristics here are also very good. Nothing to worry about. Let's move this a little lower because it can. There's not as much weight on it anymore. Okay. And yeah, fun premium. Looking good. But what do the markets say? Ah, right. Yeah, the track cars have come in here now because they don't care about comfort. They care about performance. And this car now has a very decent performance. Let's take a look at the detailed stats or rather track stats. So, six, 9.5 seconds, so it's half a second quicker, and probably better in the cornering as well. The brakes are still holding up nicely, They're even a little bit too strong now, and the gearing is also good. Right, so we could have this one, and then let's make a... Um, uh, do we have two seats? No, this is still four seats. My god, I forgot about that. Now, now things become light. Well, 10 kilos lighter. That's a fail. Uh, but maybe the markets like it better. Yeah, they kind of do. Hmm. Right. So, uh, how much how much do we put on here? Uh, sport budget, 30 track. Yeah, that's looking at 30% on this one. Maybe because it's the Spurs stripped version we want to have a little less 25% and then let's go to the standard and how much do we put on here this is more in the premium segments we can have let's say 40% Ugh. Uh, yeah I mean the fun premium would still sell I guess and let's go 35 yeah not so convinced about this one but now if we make another version and we copy this one and we call it the premium and that one what do we give it give let's say we give it the luxury and luxury and that that is all good uh, two seater luxury luxury two seater uh, we are not competing with the super mar uh, supercar market anyway, uh, like our other cars, so I don't think that is too bad. This would be even better because it's uh, somewhat lighter. Mm, our fuel consumption is really good though. Um, maybe we want to just beef up the engine a little bit for, for those versions. So if we go with Sport and Luxury, that is... Let's see, take a look at the markets. Hasn't improved much, has it? A sports car category still doesn't like my car. Nah, it's difficult. It's really difficult. Um, hmm, what more to do? I think what we should be doing is to put a beefier engine into the engine bay of the premium and the stripped version, because that then opens up uh, more, more people buying it in the track category for the strip version because it's a more racy engine and in the premium category probably it makes it a little bit more let's say in tune with the updated weight of the car 
So we call this variant of the engine the Sport. And now let's see what we can do with the cam profiles. This looks uh, more sporty already. And now we need Barrel Eco. Oh, we can go with a uh, triple carburetor setup. Uh, DCOE, so basically one carb per cylinder. A performance setup here. And we max it out at 13. Yes, ooh, look at that. We are probably using triple the fuel. Um, not quite, no, double the fuel almost. Uh, this is good. Now 70, and we rev it even higher. Yes, that is looking good. And open up the exhaust. Yeah, 124 horsepower out of this one. Also, we could go for this exhaust. Mm, these headers, long headers. It's just one horsepower now. It, it isn't worth it. But we want to get rid of one of the mufflers so that it sounds a little bit more sporty. And now we just pump in lots of compression in order to fill it up. And 132 horsepower. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, do we want to rev that high? Yeah, we do. Okay, that's the sports version of this one. And now uh, let's put yes yes now we have this one see oh much more sporty you see that 30.8 now instead of 24.3 that helped a lot all right yeah now we are there look at that that is basically where we aimed at uh, it's the fun premium light sport premium and track premium and now if we just load in the strip version and we put in our new engine, that should do really well in the track category. Now lots higher sportiness there. And can we go higher? Yes, we can. Very good. And now markets. Yeah, track. Look at that. Very good. We managed to make something useful out of this. Now we just have to take another look at the standard version, if that is not a little too, let's say, mundane. Um, now it is pretty good for the family premium segment. What, what do they really care about? Footprint, they care about dick size. Safety, well, we have safety. I uh, care about prestige, um, yeah, a small V, uh, inline six isn't really that prestigious, I guess. We could go and re-optimize this a little bit, like that, and brakes, they are fine, plus five, yeah, that's a little better, um, hmm, I don't know, no, that is all looking decent, maybe a standard? We have to have the, the uh, category in here though. Uh, family Sport Premium. And Family Sport. Let's see what they really like regarding these things here. That is worse. Premium radio. Oh, they really like the luxury radio. And they do like the premium interior, I guess. Or do they even want to have the luxury interior? Nope, they don't. Sport interior? No, oh, they don't, don't like that. It's all good. All right, let's go with this. Uh, I'm happy with this car. So this was uh, quite a build. This took a, quite a while. So now we have to set up our factory for that. And let me do over here. Do we have all prices set? I think we do. Do we set a new price for the premium? No, oh, still 35. Let's see how high we can go. 45? Still good. Uh, let's go with a premium of 50% on that. That's looking good. It's even encroaching a little bit on the supercar market, uh, but our other car has that one covered nicely. So now we set up our factory, or first this year. So efficiency, and we are aiming for three years exactly. The stand. Ooh, look at those reliabilities <laughs> that's really low mm. I think we have to yeah what do we do about that I mean those are super shit reliable uh, uh, 
That's bad. So we really want to up this a little. But that's so costly. So we, this is still not implemented. It should be a slider for everything here. And just a little boost to that. And if we put in a little bit more money, then we get down to 3 years, 3.0 years. It's easier on the engine side. Here you can see like one car uses this and two uses, uses this type, this variant. And here if we go all efficiency and if we increase the reliability a little for both of these, then we have a really reliable engine. So basically the car will fall apart but the engine will last forever. Not forever but for, for those standards back then, back in those days. They will last a long time. Good. Uh, we can still lower the funding though. Huh, 50 mil. It's almost nothing. Okay, now we have want to buy a new factory and that is a medium. A medium for both. And now we need to set that one up so that we are not bankrupt at the end. Tooling cost 154 million. Okay. Uh, well, automation, we can pull that down a little just to save from some of the money for the tooling. But then again, we have pretty good income right now, so we can leave it at a standard for now. You could just pull it down and save loads of money, as you can see here. So if you, if you want to have a larger factory but cheap, um, cheap tools in there, you can do that. But it is... Um, biting you in the in the heels a little later on when you want to upgrade that then it will take much longer to to buy like the heavy tooling new heavy tooling and much more expensive to upgrade that than just the minor tooling so medium factory here too and 50 50 yeah that's looking at 204 and 100 and it's not too far apart so we go with this and we have our premium. The premium was pretty good. I think we need to limit the production of the standard, really. So we put that one down. And the stripped one is interesting, but has very little market. So if we just produce 25 cars of that. Uh, let's see. Can we get yeah, 25? Lock this one. And then we produce, mm, let's say, 60 of this one. There we have 60 of this one, 75 of the premium. Mm, all looking good. Okay, now we could scale this up with the same. Yeah, do we want to run this at three shifts? I think we want to. Let's just try it out. And now engines required 90 and required 150. Let's see, 90. It's pretty close, but we do need many more there. So let's reset this at 90 again. Uh, many more there. Okay. Set this at 90 again. 93. Uh, one lower. So 150. It's good. And 91. One tick lower. There we are. I think. Almost. Yeah, almost. Oh, no, not in steps of 10. That is a little far. There, 150 and 90. Perfect. Yes, take this. Perfectly planned. And uh, these settings were all fine. And now, wow, okay, total cost 1.16 billion. That uh, fits right in, I would say. And yeah, that one was cancelled. This one is in production. And now we can speed up and see what happens. Right, we have entered production and wow yes you can see the effects of the medium factory that is a lot of cars we produced 3500 premiums and 2800 of the standard version and the stripped one for the track premium I think that might be a little bit harder to sell but we will see if we actually end up on stock we were down there in the gutter with the money now but yes we sold everything 
that was brutal. All right, all right. That gave us. I didn't see how much score that gave us. That must have been a lot. Let's see. Next month says. Wow. Okay, <laughs> that's a big seller we are having here. That's very good. So super successful. We let it run through a little. What the fuck? Look at our profits. They are brutally high. There we go. Almost 50 million per month. So at this pace we will be able to afford a large factory soon. But then again, if you produce uh, cars like this and that, then uh, you will build up big stocks. Okay, let's uh, run it through to 1960 and see how much score we have until then. And then wrap it up. And there we have it, 192.59 points in total. We have not built up any kind of stock for our new large production. So uh, that was a massive success. We are back at 1.91 billion dollars. Hmm, non-inflation adjusted. So that is, uh, what is that, $3.50? And uh, yes, one last thing before wrapping up. If you enjoy these kinds of Let's Plays, uh, I now have my own Let's Play channel, which I uh, manage my free time. And head over to Kill Rob Plays, or just click the link on screen or in the description below. Alright guys, last thing to say is, hope you enjoyed, and see you guys next time!